study. Praise God. Revelation chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, that they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Uh, and this concludes not just the book of Revelation, but the, the Bible. This is how our Bible ends. As we take into consideration... Uh, the entire book. Revelation often is seen as a book about endings. But please keep in mind that it is also a book about new beginnings. All right. The, 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 the end of a thing is the beginning of another. Remember, it's, it's, it's repeated over and over. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. God says he is. And so revelation should not just be seen as an ending, but it is also a beginning. And that's why we see uh, many of the images in Genesis, particularly in the garden, are repeated here in Revelation because it is the beginning of something new. Revelation is also a call to holiness for God's people. It's a call to holiness. Uh, we, 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 we can easily miss that and get caught up in the uh, typology, the types and shadows, the symbols, the allegory of Revelation trying to figure out what does this mean or what does that mean. 
and miss uh, especially the letters to the seven churches, which, 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 which begins the book of Revelation. It's a call to God's people to repent, to take heed, to, 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 to watch over themselves, to guard themselves because of what will ensue. Revelation is a call to holiness. Why? Because as First Peter uh, 1, uh, Leviticus 20, uh, uh, verse 26 says, And ye shall be a holy people unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. Uh, we, we've gone extensively into the journeyings of Israel, which is the Old Testament type of the church, how their salvation was not just to deliver them from Egypt. Uh, that, did, that, that, that was not the entirety of the purpose of their salvation. Your salvation is not just to save you from sin. Uh, 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 the, the whole wilderness experience was a time of separation. They were saved uh, from something, but they were also saved onto something. All right. Uh, 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 when we talk about repentance, repentance is not just to stop doing some things. You have to start doing some things. They were being separated from Pharaoh but they were now to be joined to God. Uh, please keep in mind that Pharaoh was considered a God and they were serving a God, howbeit a false God in Egypt. So God was separating them from idolatry, separating them from falsehood to join them to himself. Uh, hence Leviticus. Remember when Leah gave birth to Levi, uh, his name means joined. So the book of Leviticus was God joining himself or joining the people whom he saved unto himself. It's a, it's, it's a book of holiness. It's to teach them holiness. Holiness is the requirement for God's people. First Peter uh, 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 four, 1 verse 14 to 16 says, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Now, notice he, 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 he commences by calling them children. These are people who are saved. They are not unsaved, unbelievers. They are saved. And yet he is, uh, 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 um, he is instructing them uh, as saved people, just as Israel was saved out of Egypt to... Uh, verse 15, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of conversation. So this is reiterated throughout our Bibles, folks, that God has called us unto himself because the only way you're going to really reap the benefit of salvation is through being is, is through holiness, right? Without Holiness, right? Without follow peace and holiness with all men, without which what? No man shall see the Lord. See, uh, the greatest one of the one of the errors in our Western uh, 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 church today is this idea that that being saved, being washed in the blood, uh, uh, you know, it, it culminates. God's self salvation plan, God's salvific plan that, you know, and everybody sing about his grace and sing about his blood and Jesus died for me. And so, you know, we, we, we sing about grace. We talk about grace and, 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 and there is no uh, anything to do with man's uh, uh, response to that grace uh, is considered works and therefore it's frowned upon. Uh, but, but, but understand that, uh, uh, when God created man, he did not undertake that process the same way that he did anything else. Man was created using a unique process. Uh, Genesis 1, 27 says, God made man in his own image. That is not something that was afforded to animals and trees and oceans and everything, anything else that God made. 
uh, 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 uh. Why? Because man is supposed to reflect. That's what the word image means. And one of the enduring characteristics or qualities or attributes of God is God is holy. Right? And so man was created to be holy. So understand that when, when sin entered to the, to, into the, to the scene... It, 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 you know, the, 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 the definition of sin means to fall short, right? So man fell from the high position of holiness, not to a place of being clean, but to a place of being unclean. See, animals were not made to be holy. Trees were not made to be holy. Only man was made to be holy. So animals can be in a state of being clean or unclean. That's what we covered in Leviticus. Animals can be in a state of being clean or unclean. Man, however, can be found in any one of three states. Clean, unclean, or holy. But the original state of man is not clean. So when we, when we listen to all these wonderful preachers just want to uh, uh, harp on and emphasize and stay, I mean, it's an important part of our salvation experience. They had to come out of Egypt to be called to God. The blood had to be placed on the door. All of that was necessary. Jesus had to die. His blood had to be shed. It was necessary. But understand, saints of God, that the blood only cleanses. The blood of Jesus doesn't make you holy. Right, So we, we don't want to live under a gospel that just relies simply on the fact that the blood of Jesus was shed for me and now I'm cleansed from my sins, but then I have nothing else to do. No, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that's why it's called the, he's called the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is given to us to aid us, to assist us, to becoming that which God intended for us to become so that we can live with him. And, and we, talk, we touched on this last week that, you know, everybody want to talk about going to heaven and going to heaven. Heaven is not this endless resort that you're going to sit on a cloud and just, you know, uh, 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 you know just, just enjoy for the rest of your life. Heaven is not your final destination, folks. The final destination for humankind, for all believers, will be uh, on the new earth. The final destination for unbelievers will be in the lake of fire. Heaven is just a, a holding place until God renovates this earth so that believers, holy believers, not clean believers, holy believers can dwell with him uh, in, 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 in the new Jerusalem. Right? So understand here in verse 7, it says, in verse 7, verse 7 says, uh, uh, that the uh, Revelation 22 verse 7. Behold, he says, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. So it is a call to obedience. Again, we don't hear a lot of our preachers and teachers today talk about uh, what us as believers, the onus, the burden that is placed upon us to walk in obedience. The Holy Spirit is an aid. Okay, it's an aid to help. Praise God. But we have to. Peter says, be holy. You have to desire to be holy. You have to want to be holy. Right? So it, it, it's, a, it's a call. Revelation is a call to holiness. It's a call to obedience. So that you can partake of this new earth. That the, that the Lord, that, that God is going to uh, uh, furnish, okay? So anything that's called obedience today, the, the, the modern church uh, 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 treats it like it's oppression, right? It is, it is, it is a false, uh, 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 it's, it's a misunderstanding and a misapplication of the word works. Majority of the time when Paul talks about works, He's dealing with circumcision. He's talking, he's dealing with uh, 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 feast days and Sabbath days and Jewish tradition. That is mainly what the word, the word works there uh, is meant. Works does not, is not a, meant to be applied to being baptized or to live holy or to live right as many of our churches try to uh, 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 um, portray today. So Revelation consistently calls 
for believers to persevere and remain faithful so that this promised salvation will be their inheritance. Don't, don't, again, don't let anybody fool you. You can lose your salvation. That's why the revelation becomes so important, right? Because you can lose your salvation. It is, it is, it is, it is a message to the church, a message to believers. That which you have received, you have to remain faithful to maintain a standard of holiness, not just being happy that you're washed in the blood and I'm saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, and I'm singing, dancing every day and just, 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 just relaxing. You don't, you don't pray, you don't fast, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have no, no zeal for God. Just, just thinking I'm saved and that's it. No, you have to press. Paul says, I press towards the mark. For the prize of the higher calling that is in Christ Jesus. Right? So there's an end of your salvation. Okay? You haven't received your prize as yet. You haven't really received the end goal as yet. Praise God. So you have to keep on pressing. All right. Uh, beginning with Revelation 17, we have a strong contrast between two cities. Unclean Babylon and Holy Jerusalem. Remember, unclean Babylon and holy Jerusalem. Notice, it's not a distinction between clean and unclean. God is not coming back for a clean people. Cleanliness is an intermediate state, right, that one goes from. We were created to be holy. We fell into sin, which made us unclean. When we, by, by applying the blood of Jesus Christ and being baptized, you wash away your sins. But all it has done is moved you from unclean to clean. Because God cannot put his Holy Spirit in an unclean vessel. Right? So by being baptized, you wash away your sins. Now you are clean. It only now prepares you to receive the Holy Spirit, which is going to enable you and empower you to live a holy life so you can qualify for the new earth. Right? For the new earth. Right? It's not about just going to heaven. It's about living forever on the new earth. So notice that the citizens of the two cities have contrasting names written on their foreheads. Revelation 17 verse 5 says, And upon her forehead, talking about uh, 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 Mystery Babylon, it says, Mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. But notice in Revelation 22, it says that, they had, verse 4, they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. So we, 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 we covered that, that who you belong to, you're going to have to take a mark. You're going to have to take a mark. Either you take the mark of the beast or the mark of the Christ, right? But everyone has to be, has to be identified by whom you give allegiance to. Two. So it's an issue of identification. And notice, it's either you belong to one camp or the other. Okay? Humans in all ages have been given a grand total of two choices to identify with. Either you're going to identify with Babylon or Jerusalem. Either Satan or God. Either evil or righteousness. You can't have it both ways. People of every era have attempted to straddle the fence, okay? You think you can live one way, praise God, one day and live another way. It will not, it does not work, all right? It does not work. There's no such compromise. There's no third choice. There's no hybrid between the two, right? If you identify with one, you cannot be identified with another. It's not about how you dress on Sunday and you come to church and think you're full pastor because you, 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 you look like you're saved. You go to the altar, you speak in tongues for 20 minutes and then you go for the rest of the week and live your, live your life and, and nobody sees you. God is the one that is going to judge and determine where you spend eternity. All right. So please understand that when you're living your life, live it authentic. Don't be a hypocrite. Praise God, because God sees, knows, and records. He sees, he knows, and records your thoughts and your actions. Those who are uh, 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 in Babylon, they are not written in the book of life. Those who are with the, with the New Jerusalem, their names are written in the book of life. 
So the seven letters that begin the book of Revelation are not only addressing seven congregations, but it is meant for us as well, right? And it is for us to persevere, right? And it condemns the lack of faithfulness, right? We are seeing too many of our people today, especially our young people, just falling away, just drifting away. And you're, you know, wandering, you're twisting like I, I spoke about on Sunday with a lot. He, he was righteous, but his soul was vexed, right? And we're seeing people today struggling. The warning is severe for those who make concessions with evil for the sake of getting along in society. Your salvation history can be reversed, just like how all of those uh, uh, Israelites over the age of 20 years old, besides Caleb and Joshua, they all died in the wilderness. So the choice is stark. Be determined and long-suffering to obey God and by doing so remain faithful and receive your eternal reward or give in for a momentary pleasure, for a few fleeting moments of enjoying this life and spend eternity absent of anything that is good. That is what uh, the lake of fire will be like, you know, folks. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a physical fire that is burning. It is the absence of anything that is good. No love, no joy, no peace, no hope, no faith. Anything that is good will be absent from that environment. Praise God. In verse 1, John sees a river flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. He describes it as containing the water of life. Now, we've covered this again from the Old Testament. It is what we call living water. Remember, we said living water is running water, right? Uh, uh, they were never supposed to use standing water. Standing water becomes stale, right, and develops bacteria. So anything uh, that had to do with sacrifice, anything that had to do with uh, any religious purpose, uh, the water had to be running water. Praise God. And, and uh, 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 you know, uh, even in our, so many of our baptismal pools today, in some churches, uh, 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 they use, you know, water will be there and it's not emptied. It really should not be so. Uh, you should have fresh water poured out. Uh, 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 you know, if, if it's the same candidate on the same day, you can baptize in the same water. But if it's another day, you're supposed to have fresh water. The water symbolizes the cleansing, fresh uh, 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 power, the freshness of the blood of Jesus Christ and also of his spirit. The point that is uh, that we are meant to notice is the source of the living water. Notice it comes from God, from the throne of God. The living water is for the purpose of purification. And it's only God who can purify that which is unclean. Remember, state of holiness, state of being clean, state of being unclean. Only God can cleanse us, right? So in the Old and New Testament, living water, as I said, was essential in daily life. And we covered this when we went through the book of Matthew, all right? In the New Testament, it was called the mikvah, right? The spiritual, the ritual bath, praise God. And it was what the priests would wash in before they could serve, right? Living water uh, that came from a moving source like a river. And it was a, used as a cleansing, cleansing agent, but it was only symbolic of what God would do spiritually. So when you're baptized in the water, it's not the water that washes away your sins. It is only a symbol of the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. So the water has no magical power to remove defilement. But in sincere obedience... When we obey God and we, uh, uh, obe uh, you know, the, uh, the, the faith that saves is obedient faith. And so when you obey what the Lord tells you to do, God responds to your obedience, right? And he makes what is unclean, clean again. But again, don't be satisfied with just being clean. We have to move from the state of being clean to being holy. Praise God. Therefore, the water flowing from God and the Lamb's throne represents the eternally continuing flow of purification that comes from his throne. 
Praise God. So while we are in the natural realm right now, remember we talked about the reality of duality, right? We have water, natural physical water that we use. But in that new earth, praise God, there won't be any need for any natural water. Praise God. Amen. Because God himself, praise God, will pour out the, 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 the purification. Amen. Not, not that anything will need to be purified. Praise God. But as the source, the source of purification. Amen. It, it, will, it, will, it will demonstrate to us where that source comes from. Verse 2 says that between the main street and the river that flows is a tree of life that produces 12 fruits. In your King James, it says 12 manner of fruits. But if you look at it, the, the, the word in italics is, the, the word manner is in italics. And I've taught you before, it simply means that that word is not in the original text, right? So it is 12 fruits. And so some think that it's 12 different type of fruits, but it is really meant to teach us that whereas you plan something now and you, it, it bears at a certain season. We're accustomed to four seasons. Uh, fruits don't bear in the winter. Fruits don't bear in the, in, the, in the fall. Well, some may in the fall, but you plant in the spring and you reap in the summer. But in this new earth, every month, Praise God. will be a, a, a reaping season. There'll be no winter. There'll be no fall. Every month, praise God, it's just an abundance of replenishing that will be in this new earth. Praise God. So the tree of life that first made its appearance in Genesis is back. The tree of life had the property to give life to, to anyone who ate from it. But because Adam and Eve sinned, and ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were barred from eating of the tree of life. Why? Because they fell from being holy to unclean. And if they had eaten of the tree in an unclean state, all right now, right, they would have lived forever being unclean. See, by, the, by God evicting them from the garden, it was, it was not so much as a punishment, it was a, as a protection. Just as how I said that heaven is a holding place until the earth is renovated, Adam being evicted from the garden to, to, to experience what we today experience in sin, it's just a holding place that we are in today until the, the lamb could come. That's why Genesis 3.15 is so powerful when he says that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. We're in a holding pattern now so that mankind can move from unclean, not to clean, but back to the state of holiness. So now you can go back into the garden and eat from the tree of life. I want us to see that, folks. Praise God. That is the cyclical motion. That is what God has intended from the beginning. Praise God. So uh, Adam and sinned, uh, Adam and Eve sinned, and uh, 1 Corinthians 21, 22, and 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21, 22 tells us that uh, in Adam uh, uh, all died, right? It says, for since by man, by, since, uh, uh, by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead, right? And verse 2 says, verse 22 of 1 Corinthians 15 says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So your, 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 your life to live in this new earth only comes out of that river of life, out of that tree of life, which comes from God. So here on this recreated new earth, the tree of life will, ret will, will return and be made accessible not to a clean people, uh -huh. please, not to a clean people, but to a holy people. The tree of life doesn't give life. The tree of life maintains life. Oh my goodness. Get that one tonight. The tree of life doesn't give life. It maintains life. Praise God. All right. So Adam and Eve were given life by God, 
but they were to eat of the tree to maintain what they had. They fell into a state of uncleanness, had to be removed from the tree of life because if they ate from the tree of life, it would have maintained, they would have maintained their uncleanness. See? So by being evicted from the garden, praise God, and Jesus Christ coming to die for man's sin to move us from the state of uncleanness, first to cleanness and then to holiness, now we have a right to go and eat of the tree of life to maintain the holiness that we have achieved in this life. My, my, my. That's a whole lot said right there. Praise God. And it says, for the healing of the nations. Now, we already read that there's no sickness, there's no dying, there's none of that stuff going on in this, in this new earth. So why would there be healing? Well, guess what? The Greek word is therapeia. Therapeia, from where we get our English therapy. See? Therapy. So it is not for healing diseases, but it is for service. Okay? It is to serve the nations. Praise God. To, to give them the pro properties, praise God, that maintains their health. Praise God. Amen. So the phrase is better uh, uh, translated for serving or preserving the nations. Right? It's not to serve and to preserve them. Praise God. So everything is there to preserve you in the state you already have become. Praise God. And I'm going to get, we got into, get into that. Now, it says, no longer will there be any curse there. All right? Now, we've studied in the Old Testament where uh, he says that the, you have curses. If you remember when we did Deuteronomy. And then you have the curse, right? Uh, the curse of the law is death. The curse of the law is death. But the curse of man, believe it or not, is your, your choice, the ability to make choice, your, your volition or your will. Okay? The curse is really your ability to choose. Okay? I'm going to show you why. Because now, one may say, all right, there'll be no curse there because there'll be no sin or death. But remember, Satan will exist, albeit uh, in the lake of fire. He's, he is present wherever he is, separated from this new earth. So it's not the absence of Satan per se, or the absence of evil per se as it will be man's inability to choose. Because now watch this. Satan was uh, accessible to Adam and Eve, right? So Satan has always been a force for evil. But if Adam and Eve never had the power of choice, they could have never sinned, see? So the problem was never Satan's presence or absence. Really, the matter was man's choice, okay? Man's ability to choose. And I'll prove that to you. Because what Paul groans about in Romans 7 is his ability to choose, see? He says, when I want to do good, evil is present. I, 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 I want to choose something, but then there's another choice that is fighting against what I want to choose, see? So because I can choose between two things, he says, oh, wretched man that I am, I am cursed because I'm caught between two choices. See, so when we talked last time about the conditions of this new earth, that this new universe will lack opposites. There'll be day, but no night. There'll be life, but no death. So guess what? What the, 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 the reason why we will be able to enjoy the experience of the bliss of eternal life and joy and peace, it, is, it, is, it, it will be as a result of the environment and the conditions we will be in. In this environment and in this condition, you will not be able to choose anything else. See? Right? You will not be able to choose anything else. So let's go to verse 4 and see what he says. He says, uh, 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 verse 4, uh, uh, it says, verse, verse 5, there shall be no night there. Right? Because what? 
God will be the light. So there's no opposites there. Let's look at verse 11. Verse 11 again says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. What it is therefore uh, uh, depicting or demonstrating is a condition where for people have become frozen in the choice that they made. See? We're, we're all looking to be in this new heaven and this new, this new earth, right? We're, we all want to get there. But understand that it is a condition where you are frozen, where you cannot make a choice. <laughs> See? The opportunity for you to choose is now. Because absent from the reality of that experience will be the ability to make a choice. Okay, absent from the environment, that environment, you will not be able to choose. So if you if, 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 if you find yourself stepping out of time, we live in what Einstein calls the space time continuum, the fabric of space. Right. And as long as there's space and time, then there is changeability. That's why we have time and it's measured in increments because where you have space and time, there has to be change. And we measure that, we measure that change in time. But when you're stepping into eternity, there is no space-time continuum, which means there is no change, right? So therefore you are frozen in whatever state you were in at the moment you step into eternity. My, my, my. I want you to get that, saints. Because many of us are living the moments of our lives very carefully. Carelessly, thinking that you always have tomorrow, thinking that you can make some changes some of the time when you don't, you and I don't know what moment at what moment in time you're going to step into eternity, right? Because that is the the, the 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 hallmark characteristic of eternity. Whether you are with the, with, with, with with Satan in in the lake of fire or you're with God in the new earth, the problem is there will be no ability to change. So he that is filthy will remain forever filthy. Praise God. He that is, uh, uh, verse 11 says, he that is uh, unjust will be forever unjust, right? He that is righteous will be forever righteous. He that is holy will be forever holy. See? All right. So we, 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 we ought to, with that knowledge and with that understanding, be very careful. Right. With that knowledge and that understanding, be very careful how you live every moment of your day, folks. All right. Every second of your day, you need to live it with this awesome uh, uh, sense of, of, of what it can mean for your eternal state. Praise God. Because as I said before, salvation can be gained and salvation can be lost. All right. Verse 3, notice how many thrones are mentioned in verse 3. He says, but the throne of God and of the Lamb. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Right. One throne. Right. Will be occupied by both God and the lamb. Can you imagine two people sitting on the one chair fighting over the chair to see who gets, you know, who sits where or is Jesus sitting in God's lap? I mean, imagine, folks. Right. All throughout the Bible, God is seen as only one God, but he consists of several attributes, characteristics or manifestations. Clearly, God can be in heaven while operating elsewhere without the need for individuality. God does not have to divide himself into separate persons for him to accomplish all that he has done, both in his deity and divinity in spirit and in his humanity in the flesh. And we've covered that. So now here in Revelation 22, we have God and the Lamb. Even though they are spoken of separately, they share the same throne. So we are seeing the full substance of God, right, in the new Jerusalem. And we covered that particularly in chapter 1. Verse 3 again says, The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will worship not him, not them, folks. Read verse 3 again. Mark it. Highlight it. Right? For all the folks who believe in a uh, multi uh, multi-personality God. Okay? All right? Uh, God is not schizophrenic. He didn't say, uh, the, the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall, shall serve them. That is what a pluralization of God should say. Otherwise, somebody messed up here uh, uh, in, their, in, their, in, in their English, right? If you're dealing with two people, 
then the pronoun should be them. But here it clearly states and shows you that God and the Lamb is clearly a him. One individual, folks. Oh my goodness, I'm getting excited. Praise God. All right. So it's one throne occupied by one person who is to be worshipped. Okay. And so whereas God's home has always been in heaven, now his home is on earth. And he dwells among humans. My, my, my. We touched on that, right? So God whose throne is, has been in heaven all this time while uh, the earth has been tucked away. Praise God. And God has visited the earth in his spirit, through his spirit and through his flesh in his son, Jesus Christ. Now God comes in his complete entirety. Hallelujah. Praise God to dwell amongst us in that new earth. Ah, God. Verse 4 explains that believers will wear his name on their foreheads. And this is direct connection to the high priest wearing God's name on his forehead. It's about identification. Praise God. Taking on the name of Jesus Christ is important, folks. It is absolutely important. Salvation is all about who you identify with. And those who take on the mark of the beast will have the name of the beast. But those who belong to Christ must Take on the name of Jesus Christ. Stop letting folks fool you. Praise God to think, amen, that titles can save you. When Jesus himself said, praise God, that I am come in my father's name. If another should have his own name, you would receive him. Praise God. Jesus did not even have his own name. He had his father's name. That's what John 5, 43 says. And we've covered that. Verse 5 repeats the night that, that night will no longer exist, which means, God, it's a universe with no, that no longer has opposites. Opposites, right? As a matter of fact, when astronauts go into space, they can't tell up from down. Why? Because it's gravity that gives you the sense of up and down. But, but the, 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 the gravity on Earth is not... Is not uh, uh, um, uh, 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 it's not uh, consistent throughout the universe. There are some planets with stronger gravity than Earth, and there are some with lighter gravity than Earth, and some places there is no gravity. So there are, there are experiences even within our current universe where, I mean, when you get into uh, 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 um, the, 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 the micro uh, realm, praise God, oh my goodness, I can't remember right, right now, praise God. When you get into that micro, micro realm, Praise God. Uh, uh, quantum, yes. When you get into the quantum physics and quantum mechanics, folks, the, 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 the laws of science change. Praise God. And that is in our universe, in our current universe. Praise God. So we're talking about a place where it's going to be multidimensional and things are operating completely out of our current scientific experiences. Praise God. And this lack of opposites will 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 al will also allow you to not experience the ability to make choices. Praise God. And we've covered some of this. I'm not going to go deep into that, uh, deeper into that tonight. All right. So we are told in verse five that believers will reign as kings. See, and that's why I believe that uh, in the in the millennium period, the martyrs will reign. But I believe here in the new heaven and the new earth, uh, this is where the church, praise God, will now reign as kings. Praise God with him. Verse six, there's a sense of urgency and it's a call to holiness, folks. Praise God. If you don't get anything out of Revelation, praise God. This is the time for the church, amen, to make sure that you are ready. And it repeats over and over this urgency that says what? He is soon to come. Verse 6, praise God. Amen. He says the, uh, 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 the things which must shortly be done. Right? Verse 7, he says, behold, I come quickly. Praise God. All right. Verse 10 says, uh, uh, the time is at hand. And verse 12 says, I come quickly. And if that was spoken 2,000 years ago, folks, imagine how much closer we are, praise God, to that revelation. Glory to God. Uh, now than then. Why is this repetition, re repetitious warning of imminence? Because when Christ returns... Right? 
the spiritual condition and eternal future of everyone living will be frozen. Your spiritual condition will be frozen, right? All the folks who think when I get to heaven, I'm going to bargain with God and I'm going to, you know, well, Lord, you know, you're going to have a, you know, as if, it, 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 no, that's not the time for the courtroom, folks. Uh, 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 you know, the, the courtroom is now. The Bible says we have an advocate. The advocate is now. <laughs> You're not going to have an advocate when you get to heaven, folks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. So any type of, of, of repentance, any type of uh, uh, getting things right is now while you have the choice. When we step out of time, there will be no final opportunity to make a decision or to rethink a wrong done. The, this, the time for decision has come and gone permanently. Praise God. Praise God. Can you imagine how many people on their deathbed when they can't talk and can't think straight don't have the opportunity to say, forgive me, Lord. Praise God. Saints of God, we need to really uh, 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 treasure the moments, the seconds that we have each day and watch over those thoughts that you entertain into your minds. Praise God. And those emotions that you allow to fester. Praise God. Because you never know when you will step from time into eternity. Verse 7 again, there's a theme of urgency. Right? And he says, blessed are those uh, who read. Praise God. Uh, uh, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy. That what? Keepeth. Keepeth. Right? Keepeth. Okay? Just as in uh, chapter 1, there was a blessing. Right? Here it is. Praise God. He says, I'm coming soon. How do you keep the words of the prophecy? Remember we talked about the Shema? Deuteronomy 6. Right? Hear, O Israel. Hearken. Right? The only way that you can be blessed is by taking heed to the words of the book of this prophecy. So the beginning and the ending of Revelation are tied together, right? Let's not bypass the definition of who gets the blessing, okay? It is those who do. There are too many hearers and not much doers. The Bible says be ye doers and not hearers only. Praise God. So we must Hear and obey. Praise God. It is a call to holy living. Verse 11 says, however you are, you are destined to remain that way. Right? We talked about that. However, whatever condition you want to be. And understand, folks, it is important that you do not delay in making your decision for Christ before he returns. Because one of the consequences of the eternal state is a, per, uh, is a person's condition and future are set in stone without the opportunity to change your mind. Now, our character is formed over time. Okay? The more you harden your heart is the harder it becomes. Right? Pharaoh is a perfect example. Right? So while you might think that there is some flexibility now and you're playing with God... Right? Where you come, you hear the word, the word softens your heart, you go to the altar, you cry, a cup of tears, praise God, and you, you know, you say you want to serve God, but you keep going back out and you keep repeating and you keep repeating, and it's a cycle and it's a cycle. The longer the cycle remains, guess what? It's the harder your heart becomes. And so you, 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 it starts by you, 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 you start coming to the altar less, you start reaching out less, you start praying less. The church don't excite you as much anymore. The service don't, you don't, you don't get the same out of it anymore. And, it's, and it can take years, folks. But it's a gradual hardening of the heart until one day you step into eternity, folks. Right? The Bible says, if you often harden your neck, it will suddenly be cut off. Right? And that without remedy. Okay? So I am encouraging everyone especially our young people, praise God. Because as we said, uh, 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 as I said last night to our young men, we, 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 you know, uh, biblical history, human history covers about 6,000 years. There's 8 billion people in the world today. Now, there haven't been 8 billion people throughout all 6,000 years. But if you multiply 8 billion by 6,000 by 6, years, I mean, that's a whole lot of people. I mean, what kind of ego 
does one have to have to think that you know more than all these people who have lived all these years? What kind of pride does one need to have to think that you know better than all these people who have lived all these years, that you're wiser than Solomon, to think that you're going to do things your own way and come up with your own, with a new result that has not been recorded in your Bible? It is the, the, the essence of folly and foolishness, praise God, to think that you know better than the Word of God. So I encourage everyone, praise God, take heed unto yourself. Take heed unto the word of God and watch and see how you're backsliding. Watch and see how you're losing interest. Watch and see how your joy is slowly evaporating. Praise God. Your zeal is dying. Praise God. You are in a death grip. Praise God. You are drowning. Praise God. And your heart is becoming harder. And that day might catch you unawares. Glory to God. Praise God. We're the choices that you made, right, of vacillating between the two. Praise God. Now you're forever frozen in the choice of maybe perhaps at that moment or for that period of time uh, uh, not living holy. Praise God. So uh, 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 your, your character becomes fixed and unchangeable over time. And will eventually determine your destiny. Remember when we talked about sin? We said it's not the act of sin so much as it is the continued commission of it. When you become identified with it. So verse 11 is a warning, right? Not to non-believers, right? But to, uh, but to believers. Verse 12, Jesus says he's coming soon. And along with him will come the various rewards that will be meted out based upon their... Look, look at verse 12, sir. He says, My reward is with me to give every man according to his work. My God, my God, my God. This refutes every argument. He didn't say, I'm going to reward you according to my grace. Praise God. He said, I'm going to reward you according to your work. Let us, let us not give in to the fallacy. Okay, and the false teaching, praise God, that says anything you do pertaining to obedience has no value. Praise God. When he says, I'm going to give my reward. Yeah, you might be saved. Praise God. But there will be rewards. Amen. Not, 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 you're not saved by works. Praise God. But there will be rewards, be rewards given out. Praise God. Verse 14 says, how blessed are those who wash their robes verse 14 right they they, they uh, bless are they that 14 that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life okay they have uh that that do his commandments see that again do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city right so understand folks your actions are going to display what type, type of tree you are, right? By their fruit, ye shall know them. And the Holy Spirit is given to you to bear fruit. Praise God. So you can't live in the flesh and think that you're going to be all right. And much of this, again, we've covered before. But you see how Revelation is not really teaching you anything new. It's an exhortation of all that you have heard and all we have studied and all we have read. If you're going to indeed inherit this new heaven and this new earth. Don't, it's not what the popular, uh, 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 you know, Christian culture want to teach you that, oh, you know, you die, you go to heaven and, you know, everything is just fine and you live forever with Jesus in heaven. That's not what your Bible teaches you, folks. All right? This is what eternity will look like. And then verse 15, he begins to list those who are on the outside, dogs and sorcerers, who are mongers, murderers, idolaters, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You can ask me in the discussion what it means by dogs, and we can discuss that later. But notice verse 16. I, Jesus, hallelujah, have sent mine angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. Lord, help us. If there was ever any more clarity as to who Jesus is, this should tell us. Because it is the same Jesus who says he's sitting on the throne, praise God, as God and the Lamb. 
is the same Jesus who says, I am Alpha and Omega. He says, I, Jesus, hallelujah, praise God. Uh, 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 testify these things. Verse 17 is important. He says, and the spirit and the bride. Oh, we've heard that. We've quoted that. But the bride is the church. So the church is mission. That's why our theme is go. That's why we're all about soul winning, folks. It's not because Pastor Brown is trying to build a big church. Hello? <laughs> it is because it is the command of Jesus Christ. The spirit and the church should be telling people to come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will come. That should be the constant message of the church, calling people to what? Holiness. Lord, help us. How many times do we hear preachers today calling the church? Praise God. Come. God is going to bless you with money. Come. God's got a wife for you. Come. Uh, sow a seed of $1,000. Come. Isn't that what we hear much of the church saying? But is that what the spirit and the bride says? Come on, folks. The spirit and the bride says, come. Come. It's a call to holy living. It's a call to righteousness. It's a call to preparation for eternity. That is the message that the church ought to be preaching. Praise God. So he says, you can drink freely. Praise God. All right. We should trust God's word and do what he says. And there is a consequence for refusing that. He says, verse 18, I testify to every man that heareth the words of the prophecy. If any man shall add to these things, God shall add to him the plagues. God, people, contrast these lessons with what you're hearing from preachers today. Okay, folks? This is, again, and I'm not saying, you know, not my teaching. Read for yourself. Read the scriptures for yourself. And contrast what you're reading against what you're here being preached today. Okay? And you will see how folks have added and taken away from the book. Praise God. And God says he will add plagues to them. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book, God shall take away his part out of the, out of the book of life. So everybody, oh, I don't need to go to church. I got God in my heart. I don't need to be baptized. I don't need to speak in tongues. And oh, well, I feel, I feel, and I think, and I think. That's the popular statement from everybody today in this me, me, uh, self-absorbed culture that we're living in. Well, guess what? You're taken away from God's word. Okay? I believe I'm saved because I believe in Jesus Christ. And that's all I got to do. That's what I think. Well, we're adding to, what the, to, the, to, to, the, to the scriptures. Guess what? There's a consequence for such a choice. Right? He will take away his part out of the book of life and the holy city. Right? And Deuteronomy 12 Verse 32 says the same thing. It says, What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. So it's not just in the book of Revelation, folks. It is the entirety of God's word. Praise God. He which testifieth these things says, Surely I come quickly. And here is what the answer of the church should be. Even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Fact of the matter is many of us who say we are Christians really don't want the Lord to come right now because you know for a fact you're not ready. My, my, my. Can you as a child of God with all boldness and conviction say even so, come, Lord Jesus. That is the condition you want to find yourself in every day where with all, with full assurance, if the Lord should put, his, in his, put in his appearance, you will gladly be ready to meet him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. My, my, my. The book of Revelation ends, but the story doesn't end. The gospel message doesn't end. The work of the church doesn't end. I pray, though, that uh, having gone through this very important book, it will uh, open up our understanding uh, much more as to what lies ahead and 
uh, cause us uh, some sense of urgency and conviction to examine ourselves and do our part. Again, with the help of the Holy Ghost, we can't do it by ourselves. Uh, but do our part to make sure that we receive the end of our salvation, the saving of our souls. Uh, as always, we continue on our journey. This is a journey through our Bible. And you are welcome to comment, ask questions, interact. And uh, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, reach out to us, amen, if you want to know how to be saved, if you want a Bible study. Praise God. We want to help you in your journey. God bless you. Until next time.